I mean, it's the first time that we're talking to Ashish. Ashish, thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us. Um, bring us in on your thoughts around this um, SEBI caution, talking about uh, the small cap space, using the term froth. What kind of an impact can something like this have? I think that uh, neither so it has been in the uh, you know it has been in discussion for quite some time. Uh, you obviously you're aware that as long as uh, say early as long back as early 2023, uh, you saw that a lot of uh, small cap funds, quite a few actually, at least four or five of them, which I can recall, including us, uh, all of us have been running our mid cap schemes uh, and uh, some of the small cap schemes purely for systematic flows, which means we've been allowing only uh, SIPs and systematic transfers and generally avoiding uh, large money or hot money uh, coming into the scheme. Uh, because, you know, typically, uh, however much we may uh, talk about investor behavior and investor education, the reality, unfortunately, is that, uh, you know, money chases returns. And you know that in the last one year, and as a result of the amazing last one year, one year, three year, five year, 10 year, 15 year, whatever time frame you look, uh, small cap and mid cap seems to be uh, the, you know, the best performing part of the market by a mile. And generally when such great performance comes in, uh, money tends to uh, chase. But then, you know, it also increases the risk uh, because all said and done, if you take mid cap, it is, you know, 65% of the portfolio has to be within 150 stocks. If you take small cap, 65% of the portfolio has to be within some 250 stocks. And as you'll appreciate, everybody doesn't want to buy all the 150 or all the 250. You know, generally maybe half of them are worth buying or something like that. So as a lot of money comes in, uh, people tend to hold bigger and bigger positions. There could be impact costs. You know, sometimes the lack of liquidity might drive up prices and this, it's like a double-edged sword. Right. So I think the regulator is just kind of oh. cautioning and telling everybody to prepare for eventuality. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Ashish Murli here. Uh, I have a question. See, it's always uh, uh, a problem when there is a non-stop bull run. You know, we have seen the kind of inflows into small and mid-cap stocks. One of the key issues that the SEBI has raised here is to, it's not so much about moderating the inflows. You know, every fund can moderate the inflows. They can control SIPs, put a limit. That's an easier uh, job to do. But the bigger worry is redemption. So SEBI has con uh, cautioned that there might be early movers who would get the advantage of redemption and the late uh, redeemers will lo lose money. How will the industry control this? So Murli, uh, I just want to tell you that, you know, uh, not because I want to bat for the industry, but I've been around 25 years and I'll tell you this is probably the first time where the industry, industry itself has been, has been proactively acting. Because you know, let me just tell you that when you're talking about redemption, that's like saying that, okay, when the redemption comes, I need to be prepared. But gating inflows and ensuring that you get very, very granular inflows for as long as the last one year plus, I think that prepares you very well for eventualities. Because if you see a lot of big funds over the last one year, at least, uh, long-term investors would have been there for time. But over the last one year, one and a half year, a lot of us would have got only granular money, right? I mean, 5,000, 10,000 per person per month kind of flow we would have got. Right. So I think that that gating the flows and accepting only granular money, that was also part of preparing the eventuality that ultimately someday the bull run won't sustain and uh, there could be outflows or there could be eventuality. But coming to your point about uh, redemption, I think, look, every fund manager, every investment committee, and I can tell you firsthand, we track the liquidity of stocks. We track every, 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 every uh, now and then when we have the investment review committees, we track how many days it will take us to liquidate 5% yeah. of the portfolio, 10% of the portfolio. Yeah. How many days it will tell us, it will take us to sell a stock completely. All of those things are tracked. Right, right. Okay, we are also joined by Dhirendra. Uh, Dhirendra is uh, an expert who has tracked uh, mutual funds for more than uh, 30 years. Dhirendra, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining. Uh, Thank you, Murli. Uh, Dhirendra, what's your uh, thought? It's perhaps for the first time that SEBI has kind of stepped in to very clearly say that, look, you have to put an end to this uh, uh, overvaluation. People keep putting more and more money into a smaller basket of uh, funds. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on this? My thought is that, you know, this is really for the first time and that is not SEBI's job. It should not be doing it. But I think it is doing out of concern. You know, the reality of the market is a little different. When you look at, you know, what happened in case of Franklin Templeton, 
Then SEBI took some steps and now we have a fallback fund of a very large scale. Just having that itself will ensure that we will not have that problem. That was, a, that was the SEBI's contribution uh, to a systemic gap that we have, that we don't have a very highly liquid market for. Likewise for the small caps, small cap, look at the dynamics. They are getting massive flows. Investors are putting money. A, a, a reasonable part of it will be coming by way of SIP, gradual money and long-term money, which is very desirable. And for the first time, it is happening so steadily over the past couple of years uh, that, uh, you know, otherwise mutual fund inflows always used to be a very seasonal thing, whether it be 1992, 2001, 2005, 2007. You know, if, uh, this time around, it is broad-based. And look at what is the underlying. Small cap stocks, the good ones, where the promoters are running their business passionately and, you know, in fund managers like them, and they are doing all they, are, they they take all the things that they all they have all the variables which a good stock will have or a company will have they are the companies where the large you know the foreign investors don't put money the nps money does not flow in the epfo money does not flow in this is a market which is made up entirely of speculators on one hand and mutual fund investors on the other hand the speculators will run away because pigs are you know created to be slaughtered and uh, the, you know that is that is what SEBI study also says that you know uh, nearly five percent, seven percent people make money. Rest of them actually are unable. So that is that is that is another segment where individual investors participate. But the fallout of that is that there is a dearth. You know the market falls. Some investors, mutual fund investors, may also panic. And whenever there is a fall and there is no other side of the market then the fall is very severe and that has a significant impact we should not forget that you know in a narrow market of 2008 small caps some of the small cap funds went down by 70 75 percent and that is the fear i don't see that kind of situation here because you know most investors psychologically are extremely uncomfortable with the fall only when they yes. see that the capital going down right now most investors will be sitting on massive gains and you know, investor's attitude to a decline is right. very different when he's losing his gains as compared to losing his capital. <clears throat> right. Uh, it's interesting because up until now we was we were calling all this money sticky money. Now suddenly we're concerned if there is an outflow of this. But Ashish, hi, it's Amina, and we haven't spoken for a while. But I have uh, two very simple questions. In the last couple of years, the liquidity was a concern that Sebi talked about. But in the last few years, we've seen micro companies become small, small companies become mid, and mid almost become large, which means the liquidity situation in some ways has actually improved. Uh, do you feel like there will be any actionables on this? Of course, this is the dicta, this is a talking point, and we understand that. Uh, but what happens in terms of actions going ahead? And B, if there is a little bit of rebalancing that takes place, because SIP money is sticky money, do you think the large cap space, which has been waiting for a catch up, and we've been depending on FI flows for that, might actually you know, uh, start doing well on back of just simple DI reallocation to the large cap space. So it's actually a win maybe for the large cap space, I'd imagine, while the warning for the broader markets. So yes, Samina, uh, two parts to your question. You know, I think the first one which you mentioned that micro caps became small caps, small cap became mid cap. To the extent that you know, there is obviously a natural, there is always uh, older, all, always an underlying natural force that to the extent that the market caps are rising because underlying earnings uh, are rising or the amount of investment is rising to that extent it's fair but you know if you if if there is a general perception that a lot of this is happening only because of pe expansion that's where i think risk assessment and you know the regulatory uh, warning might be probably coming through and it's true you know just bear me for a moment look at the statistics in two, in 2023 uh, the small cap component of the market, you know, you look at BSC 500 as the whole market practically, small cap component was up by about 46%. But within small cap component of BSC 500, that 46% it went up in 2023, you break it into PSU and non-PSU. PSU component of small cap went up 120%, whereas the non-PSU component of small cap underperformed the broader small cap itself. What does that tell you? It tells you that, you know, whenever something becomes a theme, Whenever something becomes a story, whenever something becomes a go-to, uh, you know, it's prone for risk. So I think the risk assessment is not entirely wrong. Uh, and I think that uh, everybody needs to prepare. Now, on your second question, 
you know, there is a limit to how much one can really reallocate because uh, if you were to say that, okay, entire small cap industry say one and a half to two lakh crores, for example, uh, you know, just talking top of my head, maybe two lakh crores, uh, you know, then 35, 65% has to be in what is defined as small cap, right? And everybody cannot move all the money uh, into large cap. So incremental money, I think investors would do well to, you know, follow what you said. I think it's likely to happen that people might go to balance advantage funds or large cap funds or large and mid cap funds. Uh, incremental flows, yes. Uh, but existing, uh, maybe some managers will rebalance their portfolios as the circular says. Uh, I don't know how much you can really put into large cap right. in all of these uh, small cap funds. Right. Uh, absolutely uh, interesting observation. Dhirendra, I'll come to you for a, a quick short answer, the last question just before the market's open. How do you think we can stem the tide now, You know, especially when it comes to redemption, to be fair to all the investors? What are your thoughts on that? No, nothing can be done, done because you, know, you can't really fiddle with the NAV. NAV is to be calculated the way it is. And I don't think this fear is may not be, you know, it might be a very temporary fear if at all there is one, because mutual funds also get some, you know, short term money. And there, nothing which prohibits small short term money coming into small cap funds as well. But the kind of money that has flown into small cap funds over the last couple of years and look at the returns, you know, the long term returns are so compelling that I have found it re really the other, other you know, the, the other way. On every decline in the recent past, mutual fund investors have put more money. 